Right. Hello, I'm John, um, student number 2242535, uh, and this is my video on how to attend a normal birth. Um, so, turn up, do a smart approach, scene safety, make sure there's no aggressive uh, family members around, um, make sure it's just a normal sort of environment, a safe environment for uh, a mother and a baby, and of course, me and my crewmate. Um, mechanism of injury, it's a pregnancy. Um, additional resources, may need one additional DCA, um, depending on whether we're going to stay and uh, deliver the baby at home, or whether we're going to take her straight to hospital. For the purpose of this video, it will be um, a case where we stay at home. Um, we'll follow the rules and regulations of the HCPC, the Westminster Examiner Service, um, and all the other governing bodies. Uh, and triage, it's one mother and one uh, potential baby. Um, go cat, uh, there's going to be no catastrophic hemorrhage because it's a normal birth, there's no APH or PPH or anything like that. Um, and yeah, uh, so I come in, make the introductions. Uh, hello, I'm John, I'm a technician with West, Mid West Midland Balance Services, this is my crewmate Connor. Um, are you happy for a double male crew? Given the fact that uh, there isn't any choice, this, we're going to say, for instance, this woman is happy for a double male crew. Uh, I'm going to start by asking um, some questions. I'm going to ask uh, what um, gestational period she is, anything over 37 weeks, so I can um, probably expect that she will be in the throes of labour. Um, <clears throat> ask if uh, everything's been normal so far, all the scans have been normal, and as this is a normal birth, um, that will be the case, so all scans are normal. Uh, she's not consultant-led. If she was consultant-led, I'd be asking why um, and where she is registered at or where her midwifery sessions have been. Um, and then I'll keep that in mind for later um, once the baby is uh, born or decides to move, and I'll be consulting with the, the midwifery department. Um, Oh yeah, I'm also uh, I'm also gonna ask her um, how far apart our contractions are. If uh, if they are less than two minutes, that's an indication for us to stay as per West Midlands uh, policies. Um, and if she has the urge to push, if she does have the urge to push, then it's also another indication to stay. I'm gonna ask her um, for her permission to have a look uh, down there just to see if I can see the baby's head. She is um, she does give us consent to do so. So I just keep her dignity in mind and have a. A brief look and uh, I can't see the baby's head so again another indication to stay and uh, deliver the baby at home so that decision has been made for her, uh, so I can be assured that um, we're likely gonna have two patients so I'm now gonna ask for um, a backup crew uh, and hopefully they get here soon um, now the mother's gonna have like I said, uh, the urge to push. Um, our contractions are two minutes apart, or less than two minutes apart. She's got the urge to push. I'm going to just coach her through our contractions and let her body do the work for her. This is her first child, um, as I would have asked. Um, so we should expect everything to be normal. There shouldn't be any surprise. Um, leaps of babies coming out of holes and stuff because it's like the fourth child. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to coach her through our contractions, allow her to push when she feels the need to push, tell her to push um, with the contractions and then breathe in between them. Um, and then that should start to push the baby's head down. Baby's head should descend um, through the pelvis uh, perpendicular to the mother at first, and then the shape of the pelvis should sweep the head so the occiput face is, uh, is, the, is to the anterior of the mother and the face is to the posterior of the mother. Um, at this point now, um, the head has come out and uh, the head has been delivered. So the shoulders now start, need to start descending through the pelvic cavity. Um, at this point, the head will start to turn. This is known as restitution. Once the head has turned and has come to a stop, I know that the shoulders have engaged and I can start applying gentle anterior pressure on the head and just continually coaching the mother through her contractions, telling her to push when she feels the need to push and breathing when she doesn't need to. And yeah, the baby can now be born. So I'm gonna get a nice clean towel. 
I'm going to dry the baby off and I'm going to be fairly vigorous with it. You can afford to be a little bit rough with it because part of the reason you do this is to agitate the baby, but it's mainly to dry it and stop it from becoming hypothermic. So give it a good rub. Baby starts to cry, which is a good sign. And then I'm going to ask the mother if she's happy for skin to skin contact um, and tell her that it will help the process to complete. Um, if she does so, she agrees. Um, so I put the baby skin to skin, I put a little hat on it to keep it warm again. And, uh, and making sure that mother um, can see the baby at least and then making sure that we can see it should we need to, just to make sure that everything's going okay with the baby, that the baby's still breathing. I'll do an APGAR score, one minute, um, and then again at five minutes uh, for the paperwork purposes and for the, uh, for the handover. Um, and I'm gonna keep an eye on the cord. Obviously keeping mother's dignity in, uh, in mind, um, but I'm just gonna keep looking at the cord just to make sure that it uh, is pulsating and waiting for it to stop pulsating. Um, babies, um, the fetal blood volume uh, is somewhat inside the placenta, so once this stops, then it is safe to clamp the cord, um, leaving about six inches from the baby and uh, about an inch or two in between the clamps. Um, and then we can cut the cord. That allows for the midwives to, uh, to have access to the, um, to the baby if they need to. Um, so the placenta might deliver by itself. It should happen between 20 and 30 minutes. Um, at this point, the, the mother may feel just a bit of a weight in her vagina, um, at which point I could just encourage her to cough and that might spit it out, or I could just give it a little gentle tug um, and, it and it should come out. Now, once it, once it comes out, I'm going to put it in a clinical waste bag, along with any other towels or anything that's collected any fluid, um, so, or particularly blood, so um, the maternity ward can estimate um, blood loss and also um, make sure that the placenta is intact and that it's all there. If it isn't all there, then it may still be inside, um, at which point uh, the maternity ward can do something about that, we can't. Um, so now, second cruise, yeah, um, baby's been delivered. Give a hand over to the second crew. Um, transport mother and baby separately to the maternity wing um, of the hospital and then hand over to the midwives, um, giving a full comprehensive hand over what's happened, how it's happened and make sure that everything's okay.